Where were you born in Benwell? Uh, Marsden Street. Is that still standing? Is it still there? No. It's gone? No. Oh. What, what, what? So far it's more than road. But we moved to Churchill Street when I, apparently when I was about a few months old. Uh, it was just a little street off Scottswood Road. I don't know if you know Scottswood Road. Yeah, I do, yeah. Well, you know where the cattle market is? Yeah. Well, a bit further along, there's a pub on the corner. I don't know what they call it now, but they used to call it the King's Head. He came in the front door, and the first door was the bedroom, and the second door was your kitchen, and off your kitchen was your scullery, so the scullery was outside the yard. Did can you remember if you, if that house had hot water? Oh no. So you had to boil <coughs> all your water? Did your house have running water? Was, outside. Was it, or it was outside, the tap was outside? Game Street was the borderline, but above that, right up, up to Elsick Road, they were all big houses. From Elsick Road onwards, up to the West Road, which was Gloucester Road. It was Gloucester Street, Gloucester Terrace, Gloucester Road. And also they were all flats, so but the posh houses were between Elsick Road and Cambridge Street. That's where I lived. <laughs> I found out in 1946, and we were there till 68 when we moved. We had to move here, my stepfather and mother had to get off the planks, you see. So we came in here in July the 17th, 1968. Big house, it was double fronted, mm -hmm. and it was different from all the. the the, the rest of the houses were all on our side and, and the other side were all big houses. They, they had attics for the servants, not that we, we had attics, but not we ever had any servants, but we had the bells to summon them if we had any on either side of the fireplaces. Uh, so it was obviously a posh family at the time. Uh, but the houses were all big, they had big cellars as well, were big cellars, lots of space. And there was two big rooms downstairs, the big kitchen, and there was one, two, three, uh, three big bedrooms and one small bedroom and one uh, small room which was I presume a dressing room or something. Actually, it was my bedroom but it was through me mum and dad's. Did you bedroom. have uh, running water? Oh yes, I had run, and an inside toilet and a bath and sort of a mini minimum central heating whenever I used it but we had hot water and there was a big range in the kitchen had a big range but not really used that, we used the, well, the gas, a very ancient gas Yes, cooker. When I lived this, I say in Churchill Street, I mean, I was just a kid, it didn't bother us. But we had, actually, it was two rooms, but my dad partitioned it off <laughs> so that um, they could have one, and me and my brother shared one, because I say he was six years younger than me. Um, but we only had cold water, we had no hot water, and my toilet was outside. What was um, that like then? Can you remember that? Terrible. I used to hate it. I didn't mind during the day, but if at night, my dad used to have to come with us and stand. Till I went to the toilet, that to make sure. But we were fortunate, I lived up, we lived directly opposite the public baths. Like, um, not a swimmer, swimming baths, where you could go in and have a bath. They had the men's part and the ladies' part. And the top I remember the lady that run it, Mrs. Crow's here. Yeah? And the, the, the men's were downstairs and the ladies, the women's was upstairs. So we were lucky in that sense, we used to just, because I think it was about threatens or something, you could go and have a good bath there. So we didn't really miss the hot water. Joseph Street. What was it like? In Elsick. Good community. In fact, smashing community. People all helped each other and, uh, you know, it was like hard times, as they say, but... Uh, I mean, there was no need for social workers, uh, nothing like that, because everybody helped one another. But I had old gas, gas fires in there, like, you know, it was far from modern, but it was uh, more room. I mean, I used to get a cut now and again of uh, different ones, so thing I, things I got up to, but the, it was, people helped one another. For instance, if, if, if a woman was going to have a baby, they all seemed to rally round and people would, like, take the washing and uh, do it for them and looked after one another. As a child, I was, yeah. um, um, I was from Scotswood. I moved into Scotswood actually when I come to think of it. Um, Delver Gardens, um, then my, my grandfather died. Uh, then the, everything, everything was family. And uh, we moved down to Lakewood Avenue, which is in Scotswood, which is down now, it's, it's, it's all, all finished. So I mean, it's probably the early 60s 
one I was really associated with, with living down in and around Bevel, Scottswood area. Well, I was brought up by my aunt and uncle, and I had, like, Robert and Dorothy, who are, like, my cousins, but more like my brother and sister. And the other auntie lived next door, and it was, like, all the family together in flats in John Street. I was born in Woodlands Crescent, just up on Stranwood. No bathroom, outside toilet, nothing modern, cold fire, but brilliant. We used to have fights with the kids in Noble Street Flats, which was on the op other opposite side of the park. So it was the homelanders and the flatties. <laughs> but we lived in cramped conditions because we only had a two bedroom house. In my room, well, I have a room, it was a double bed with four girls in and one chest of drawers. You know, there wasn't like... But then again, we didn't have as many clothes as the youngins have today either. Mm -hmm. You kind of got a set for clothes for school, a set of clothes for running around in and one for Sunday. <laughs> you also look good on a Sunday to go to church. Like me mum, for instance, used to call lino oilcloth in them days that you put on the floors. And she fell in the snow on some oilcloth that you couldn't see and broke both her wrists. So you can imagine what it was like. But everybody helped, everybody baked, everybody made soup, and they did a bit dinner. And... Well, I think you were closer then, and everybody was neighbourly. You know, your, your, your neighbours were your neighbours. You know, if you could rely on them for anything. Because nobody had much. Everybody was the same. Whereas now, everybody's all for themselves, and who's getting better than anybody else. Right. Your mother would see. Won't ask Maggie for a cup of sugar. Okay, ma. I've got no door. You spend when you want. Oh, ma. Well, just can't lend a cup of sugar, no matter. Yeah, there you are. Ah. But at one time, when you lived on a on an estate like this, you know there were, or mostly I had terror closets about it, and they were popping in. The wood. They would wait till they'd gone fifty, especially when the rationing was on. It would wait till you. They knew you had gone and got your rations for the week. Oh, if you got any sugar, I've got it. I want to make the baby a bottle. And, you know, you felt inclined to to give it to them. I'll give it back to you when I get my rations, but you never got them back. You knew you couldn't get away with anything um, because you knew somebody would always have a word with your mum or your dad. Was there any conflicts that you see today with your neighbours? Oh yes, <laughs> riding each other's hair in the street, and if the, if anybody's kids was in trouble, and oh yes, they were very um, stuck up for their own, and um, oh ha, oh, they had um, there was battles, battles royale, but the next day they'd probably be having a cup of tea in each other's house. It it wasn't like nowadays where you you have these massive family feuds where they're coming with you with knives and guns and things. You had an argument and, and after a couple of days it was forgotten. I'll tell you what I remember though. Uh-huh. Um, you know, in those days when I was little, every, the kids went about with bare feet, you know, had no shoes. And the police used to supply them with boots and um, what they used to do, they used to give them the boots on the Friday and on the Monday. Their mothers used to pawn them and get them back out again on the Friday. But then the police must have found out about it. So you know the tags of the boots. They did it. That the pawn brokers couldn't. Went to Cannon Street. Cannon Street? Yeah. So what was it like there? Was it any different? Well, you felt a bit more cool up, mm -hmm. you know. Did you have a favourite teacher? Not really. No, really. Oh, the more bad 
Ja, det Mr. Bollman er til med med Basin School. You would be choking on the board and somebody would talk and just... They're choking, you never miss them. And we had like in Newcastle, homeboys, you know, these was had no parents were put in the home. They go off niches. And um, they used to be in our school with a mammy friend, Betty Campbell, who used to sit. And they always got their stomach and they all used to be sitting crying because we felt sorry for them. What are the punishments did they do at school? And you got the, did you get the strap? The strap and the ruler. Did you ever get the strap? I got both. Did you? Very often. Was it on the hand? Oh. Knuckles. Knuckles. Um, no. The strap was on the hand, the ruler was on the knuckles. You should put the goodbye hands, that's what I thought, right? Uh, put your hand up, and I've seen the lads go. Oh, if you didn't, you said twice as hard. Three times for that. Well, I enjoyed school. Um, and we had, I mean, we're coming from a, like, not well off background. It was very little chances for us to, uh, like, go on to colleges or university um, so I mean there was quite a few of us all got together when it was time for the 11 plus it's the 11 plus well it was an exam oh, right. uh, way, that was like a qualified you know a, a thing and they uh, we all got together had a little meeting I don't know, this is allowed, but we uh, all decided nobody was going to wear them piss pot hats. <laughs> that's, 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 I mean, we used to call it, you know, the, the, like the people who were well off, because there was like class distinction in the streets, you know, uh, whereabouts, like sort of from Scotswood Road up over, like up to where they uh, passed the terraces in North Benwell and everything. That was like, more the posh end. You know, and the gaffers from the uh, factory and everything all lived in houses uh, around there. Uh, the workers were down below in the streets. Can you remember if the teachers punished the children in any way in those days? If, oh, if yes. you it, if you done something wrong, uh -huh. what, what would they do? You'd get the strap. The strap. Did you ever get the strap? Many times. Did it hurt? It did. Uh -huh. But what I used to do, I used to suck here, where the stop it is, and then I'd go home to me mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I wasn't really, but... No. I can remember um, our reading teacher in Cannon Street, she used to slap your hand. She did. If you'd done anything wrong, she used to slap your hand. So what were you done wrong? It could be, it would just be something like talking, probably. Because, like, I wasn't naughty there at school. Probably just for talk, she would slap your hand. You never thought anything of it. It was, it had like a cut, it was like split, maybe three or four strands. Uh, the other side was solid. So, was it leather? Oh, yes, it was leather. And the, 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 I think the worst part was not the strap, was the fact that you've got the strap, you were taken back to the classroom, you've got the class, you've got the strap in front of you. Of the class. In front of the class. And I think that that Mummy had a department. He'd he'd had a, a run in with uh, one of the lads, his kids, and he'd given him the strap four times. Bum 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 bum. And then he saw his housemaster and he said, Oh by the way, I had a trouble with so and so I gave him the strap for him. He said, That's funny, so I had him this morning, I gave him four. <laughs> And he was telling the tail of the head, because he used to sit on the same table as them, he was an old pal of the heads, and he used to sit on the table, he was telling the head, this is what you had of it, and he got about 12 times in one day. And I think, because all of the bother I had as a child, I you know, was bullied, I mean, went through all the bullying, and I, um, in fact I was a bully, and then I became bullied, and then I was a bully, and then I became but because it was just like a vicious circle, and it was a case of stand back, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I felt both sides of the pan. Um, I always felt guilty about the bullying. And even worse, because I, I met a young girl, I'm not saying a young girl, she was my age, but when I went on holiday the year my husband died, and she was one of my victims. 
and she actually came up to me and she went, I'll never, ever get over the way you treat me. And I broke my heart to think. After all those years, mm. I still have that effect on her. And I profusely apologise. You stay at the headmistress the best because if you went in early, she'd give you free bottles of milk and biscuits. The kids that got to school early, they'd get so many bottles of milk because you used to get your free milk then in the little tiny bottles. And if you were there early, she'd give you a couple of jobs that only got milk and biscuits. And the school leader, the the softest kid in the, the and the kids in school are hardish. So I was a bit of a victim as so I was a victim I was bullied. Or put made to feel alienated or put to one side because my values and views were the same as theirs. You can't turn back the clock. This is why I always say to children, don't bully. It's not worth it. It's not worth it for you, it's not worth it for them, because it's never forgotten. We were over 30 years from the time the last time I'd seen her. She actually left school at 13 because of the way I was getting her. My own personal opinion, stopping the belt at school. I think when they stopped that, everything just, nobody, the kids didn't have respect for their elders. Um, they sent me a letter, my son's 35 now, and they sent me a letter when he was at school, did would I sign this? agreement to say to stop corporal punishment they called it at school. I didn't sign the letter. I didn't think it was a good idea to stop it. I got the belt once, I never got it again. And you respected your elders, you respected the teachers, you you didn't back chat them, you know, the police on the beat could give you a clip along the lug and you didn't go back for a second one. All that went because um, the, the, the youngsters could take them to court if they touched them, which I think everything just went downhill from there. When we used to swing on the lampposts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> in the lampposts then they used to have two metal spikes came out just under the lamp itself. And you used to sling your rope up and loop it. It's whizzed down the lamppost. Uh, we used to play top and whips. I remember putting chalk on the different coloured chalks on the top, the young, the young, the young top. So they've got body colours when you played with a cotton whip. Uh, bees, rounders, uh, chucks. I don't know if you've heard of chucks. <laughs> you have four little things chucks in your, Chucks. Oh. And you have to play them and try and catch them. Uh, play ollies. Ollies. We used to play all that because we had no telly on any side. So you made your own entertainment out in the street. What tea? And we had a great big square at the bottom of our street. In all the kids from my street and from the next street along used to get together on this square and play round us and kick in the can and hide and seek. Great. But this, you never see nothing like that now. It was mainly football. Use the garage doors as goals. <laughs> so, uh, never scared. Yeah, that's it. Or if the ball went over somebody's uh, into someone's yard, it was right, who's going to climb over or who's going to run around the block, knock on the door? And make sure you get the right door because sometimes you would get the wrong door because there was no door numbers on the garages. So it used to, it used to be fun. Like. Oh, we used to have um, skipping ropes, rounders, uh, softball, which is uh, more or less like uh, baseball, but it was with a bigger ball. Kick, kick you the can, um, tag. Hide and seek, and we had at the backs of the, the houses we had like high six foot fences that went along the backs that separated a block at a time. And as young young children, we used to um, jump over them and do handstands over them, acrobats over them, um, and we got quite good at doing that. <laughs> Hide and seek. It, it sounds crazy these days, but hide and seek was a big thing we used to play as kids. Um, if we're really adventurous, we'd maybe tie a bit straight to somebody's letterbox and play knock your nine door, uh, which was a big thing then. I know it's, it sounds silly these days, but that was our entertainment. Uh, no television. Uh, no television. Can you remember the I street games? I remember them all. I mm. remember them all. I remember playing uh, Kitty the Can, which was you, you put a can and you, you used to kick it, and then, and then if the Tugged you out, but if you if you got back and kicked the can, everybody was off again. 
I remember playing what we used to call duffs, which was like running and jumping and a duff you to climb up there, which got a bit dangerous at times, but that was the game. I remember playing in the cemetery because I lived in St John's Road. I used to play in the cemetery, what you call, uh, we used to call it Jack Shine the Torch, where you used to hide and if the torch shined on you, you were on. Um, playing football, at, obviously in the car park. Um, we used to go to people's houses and play on the bits of, bits of games there. It was always something to do. Great. We played chucks, we played knuckle nine door, <laughs> we played um, donkey. Um, kick the block. Uh, oh, there was a lot of things you could do then. I just hung around with a couple of kids and played on my bike and skateboard and well, not skate, not skateboard, but roller skates. Just to play in the pretend to be in the jazz band if you believe that with the cardboard box, the Bruno type tape on top and some wooden sticks from the street. But that was a different era then, wasn't it? Jazz bands aren't even here now, was it? Well, we played outside. Like I said, we didn't have many toys, but um, when it was snow, we used to have dryers and MDs, and it was like a big square dryer with pegs across, and you could put your clothes on to dry them, electric. But the lid was flat, so we used to take the dryer lids out and the snow would sit on them. Use them as a sledge going down the street. I used to make a bogey with wheels on, like a go kart now. I was in cubs, and I, went, I used to have cubs, and I was a beaver, a cub, and then I used to train spot. I know it's a bit boring, but I used to have a rack and a book and a pencil. But I used to do all that. Did you enjoy it? Well, they kept us up the streets. To like go and swim in into the uh, local play centre. Where was the play centre? Dolphin Street. Is that the one that's still there Yeah. What did you do for entertainment? Um, CB radios we used to have. Where was that? It was a radio you had in your house and you could talk to people. You know, like what taxi drivers and uh, I went to youth clubs. I went to my side youth club on MacDonald Road, the derelict building there. We went to the West End Youth Club, West End Boys Club, um, Monty. We went youth clubs, that was my main thing. Then we went to different youth clubs. We had trips out, Sacris we went to. And, I mean, we weren't angels, don't get us wrong. You know, I mean, we were, we like, we had to drink, we all tried drinking, smoking. I smoked when I was 12, but I never let my parents see, and I knew if I did that I would never smoke again because I'd be made to eat it. <laughs> so, but they do it openly now. Youngsters walk around, cigarettes, beer in their hand, and the modern day culture, it's not for me. We used to go on the, what they used to call charabans, and all the kids in the streets uh, had to pay something each week to somebody at this woman in the street and uh, we used to go like on a coach to the coast. Play that. No, the only thing we want is the swimming bats. We did with Prudy Street Mission in the town. We used to go Tuesday and Thursday. We used to get a ticket because my mother never took me to the coast. And um, we used to have to save them up. And then we went to Sunday school and got pinkins, we saved them up, and then you saved them up. And every so often you put a bit of string to and you took them and you counted them. And you got a ticket and you all used to be stunned waiting to go on the bus to the winter being. Well, I did because my dad was in this thing with the trans mm -hmm. and he was on the committee. And he said, take the poor children to school, to places. So I was taking with them. Even my dad and father always took me with them. Can you remember any of the places that you went to? Well, the, the main place, I think, was Colour Courts. Oh, yeah. Well, no, the, the, I didn't go on all of them, but the, the choir themselves went a lot because the choir master was somebody big down and he worked for the railways and he was able to uh, use his influence to get special trips for them. So much so, when they went to Holy Island, he got the, it was at the Flying Scotsman to stop at the station, so each way so they could get walk across the Holy Island. I used to like the records as well. They would wind up gramophones first, oh, we and, then, them. and then the radiograms, you know, and first the 78s, and then they brought the 45s in, out, and then and the LPs, the, you know. At school at 15, we used to go along there in a jukebox. 
six months for the jukebox, six months for the proper tea to see there at ten o'clock. Of course, then once it got at ten, you had to run by your leg because you had to be in for ten. Couldn't be late. She sat there for hours. Walk home at ten o'clock in the dark. Never have any fear. I wouldn't do it now. Was it about this size, this red, red gramophone we called it? And you had to wind it up, you know, and then set the needle on it. And they were gripping records. Oh. I, was, I was nine years of age, and uh, I, I was always uh, a flighty little laddie, you know, always jumping around. Um, and I was looking for an interest, and uh, I remember a friend of my dad's come to the house because my dad was working on the meat then. And he used to come to the house and get a parcel of meat every week, and he was a boxing coach. And he said, uh, would you not like to box, son? I said, boxing? I said, oh, I suppose I would. So I went along the gym with him and I took an interest in boxing and uh, I, took, I boxed ever since I was nine. I had um, over a hundred amateur fights and uh, boxed all up and down the country and boxed against America and Canada and Scotland and Northern Ireland. Coming out on wins on all occasions, uh, yes. being on the television and uh, Took me boxing a bit further and turned professional. Another thing that happens now, which is we love this kid, playing football on the street, kicking the can, knock your name door. <laughs> that used to really annoy the neighbours, but never mind. But you know, now they see, I think if, if everybody remembers what they want to make as a child, they wouldn't keep picking at the kids for playing football and, and it was annoying because we have won that. When she's got her football, it's fine. When she's got her baseball or basketball, such a heavy ball, boing, boing, it's just seven o'clock on Sunday morning. So I know what it's like, I know it can be annoying, but you, I think so much of the green space is going now. So where are they supposed to go? Would you allow your child to go X amount of miles to the ball on its own? You wouldn't do it. Where is it safe? The only place that's safe is anything different to hope. But 99% of your neighbours will not have to play an outside. I'm a lost child Wandering around Can't And if you want to know Why And the places that I've found Just remind Sunday nights we used to have this air raid sirens. We used to have to get out of the house into the air raid shelters until the old care go. That's one of my earliest memories. I don't know about other people who have experienced the war, but it's let scars in me. If I was just well I couldn't be interviewed with you lot in a thunderstorm. I'd be out there like a shot, okay? I haven't been to see a psychologist, but somebody told me the bombs with the thunder, the searchlights in the sky was a lightning. That's never left me and it never will. The shelters I loved, because when the sirens used to go, uh, we used to all go down and it was like exciting for, I mean, kids, kids don't realise that you know, they could have been bombed or anything. Uh, but there was two elderly ladies, you, they, they had a flat, underneath us and they used to take this box into, and they had the, the shelter, it was an artisan in their shelter and they had the, like they had rugs and cushions and everything so that we could all get in and be comfortable when the sirens went. And part way through the night they used to open this box and it was like a, a bits of chocolate and, and stuff like that, sweetie so <laughs> it was all like to me it was like exciting waiting for something happening which we didn't know what was going to happen. When the war was on we used to see somebody's got bread in the shop and stand in the queue. I've been right over the burn. What's the queues? Aye. Long, long queues. Aye. Aye. If I was followed. I was outside playing. I was at, I mean I had been at school so I, we must have been on holiday for some reason. And it was the day of the bomb spillers. Did you ever hear about the day of the bomb spillers? Uh, flour mills, it's where the Baltic is now. That used to be the spillers factory. And I can remember hearing the whistling of the bomb. 
and me mother always told us if anything, you know, the siren went, I had to rush straight home. And I can remember running like up the streets to get home. And then we had to go to the air raid shelter. We used to have to, by then I was living in Churchill Street. And our air raid shelter was the CWS, where, you know where the, um, the wholesale place is, it's off Blanford Street, they have, they have the museums and that in there now. Well, that was our air raid shelter, underneath in the basement. And that's where we used to have to go. I know when the war was on, eh, they were all called up. And I was expecting you to go in. And I was there. I think it was down Park Road, somewhere we were called up. And when I come to me, I goes, well, I can't there, because I'm expecting. Well, you'll have to prove it. So they give us a place to go. And I had to be examined by the doctor. He found out the what. So I had to go back again. <clears throat> he said, Well, you've still got to go to Armstrong's factory and work. Although you're expecting. And that was, I used to start at six o'clock in the morning till two in the last day, week, two to ten. And I'd done that. Tell you it was It was especially on Sunday evenings when the air raid sign went, we all had to rush out into the shelter and we had to stay there until it all clear. And then I had to go to um, Gillsland, you had to be born at Gillsland. And uh, the nurse had to come with us all, on, all the way to Gillsland on the train. And then she left us. And I was there two weeks before he was born. Well, there's only about six or seven people could get it at a crush. Six or seven, yeah. At a crush. And we're ready, you had to know yourself when you went in. We made of these aluminium, I think, you know, if you, if you didn't book, book, duke when you got in, you could have easily cut your head. Well, that's about it, you see, because we weren't like commentary and things like that. We weren't trained as much. Well, there were um, like big shells like that, mm -hmm. what used to be fired. So well, when they were all marked, you had to pick them up and put them on this thing, put the thing over, and you had to use the pail and fail, and then you had to polish them. And then you had to get 40 done, what they, get, what they call their dobby in, because you got paid for them. How much money did you get paid for that then? Can you remember? Oh, it was as much. The bomb to Michael's church mm -hmm. with the sentry bomb. 